that all men are created. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. America. It is for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us. That this nation shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. America! Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, one conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are crowned America!
raising a family. Good, great job. Better than I've had in a long time. This was a huge step up. The regional chamber provides excellent points of contact for her throughout the expansion process. The incentives offered to us really helped our investments. Our project team uh, worked side by side with the uh, regional chamber team to find just the right fit here uh, in the Ward area. Then to be part of an organization that's growing in this area in manufacturing, I, mean, I couldn't be prouder. Seeing the revitalization that has occurred is so impressive. Our valley is booming. Youngstown was the perfect fit. It's not just an affordable area. There are so many opportunities here. Industry, business, commerce, uh, and so they all make up a part of our community. They're not ghost towns anymore. You actually have to go in reverse to find a parking spot downtown. We've seen our area become a strong manufacturing and industrial center once again. There's a great workforce here. Youngstown is leading an economic trend that should be encouraged. It's just a special thing to come to work every day to a thriving organization that we do, we're looking for, we're looking at what's next. And to do that here in this area, it's phenomenal. I just want to take a minute to remind you of some of the Regional Chamber's upcoming events. You can find all the details on the calendar of events page at regionalchamber.com. Please, please be sure to check this page often as we're adding lots of new events this year, including a couple of new series. The In-Depth With series addresses very specific topics, such as the one we will hold on April 14th about cybercrime and your organization's risk. And our HR Hot Topic series covers a variety of human resources matters that are important to your organizations as well. And at our annual meeting luncheon next week on March 19th, we'll also honor Youngstown State University head football coach Bo Polini with our Spirit of the Valley Award, attorney Alan Wenger of Harrington, Hoppy, and Mitchell with our Spirit of the Chamber Award, and Ohio Representative Sean O'Brien with our Political Achievement Award. Moving on, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Stambaugh Auditorium for sponsoring our program. We would certainly not be able to host any of our events without the support and generosity of our member companies, and Stambaugh has been a great friend to us over the years. Please help me welcome Mr. Ben Elliott, Director of Guest Services. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ben Elliott, the Director of Guest Services with Stamp Auditorium. Uh, we had a great deal of excitement in our office when we found that we were going to have to write a speech for today. I, of course, was nervous because I knew that out of all my coworkers here, that I would be the one up here speaking. <laughs> Uh, but the speech writing process, it proved to be a valuable learning experience. Um, first thing I learned, no matter how funny I think I am, I am significantly less funny at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, can also, uh, I also learned that a career in public speaking and uh, public office is not for me. So I can assure you all that I will be on no political ballots anytime soon. Um, as you know, Stamp Auditorium is situated on Fifth Avenue, overlooking Youngstown State University in the revitalized downtown area. Stamp Auditorium was the gift of Henry Stambaugh, opened in 1926 as a venue for the entertainment, education, and enjoyment of the Youngstown and surrounding communities. We are thrilled to be the sponsor of this year's Good Morning Youngstown, as well as the sponsor and venue for 2016. Stamp Auditorium is known for offering concerts by national and local performers, hosting major fundraisers such as the American Heart Association's Heart Ball, the annual Goodwill Auction, the Regional Chamber's Black and White Gala, the DeBartolo Foundation Dinner, March of Dimes Chef Auction, and Second Harvest Taste of the Valley. As you can imagine, modernizing and maintaining an 88-year-old building proves to be quite challenging. We experienced this recently with renovations in the Gene Tyler Grand Ballroom. Since June of 2013, there have been numerous improvements, including a new kitchen, stage area, and entryway complete with ADA ramp. New chandeliers, fresh paint, and column work enhance the decor. Technological upgrades include three retractable screens and the framework to support any audio, video, and presentation needs. All of these improvements also make Stambaugh the venue of choice as prospective brides and grooms begin to plan their big day. With multiple areas available for ceremonies, receptions, cocktail hours, and photography sessions, you will find that we are the backdrop for some of the most cherished family memories. From the restored beauty of the Ann Christman Memorial Hall and Grand Ballroom to the uniqueness of the garden and lobbies, we can provide the perfect atmosphere for any occasion. If you have recently attended an event, 
visited our website or received our season brochure, which all of you got a copy of that today, so you can make no excuses that you don't have one. Uh, you can't help but notice the wide variety of events that we offer. We are looking forward to a busy spring that includes national tours from Fifth Harmony and Toby Mac, community events such as the Interfaith Pre-Passover Seder Dinner, and memorable meals Mahoning Valley, benefiting Grow Youngstown and the Tyler History Center. We are proud to be a pillar of the community and an integral part of Youngstown's continued growth and prosperity. Our involvement has allowed us to develop relationships with many members of the community, as well as some of Youngstown's most notable businesses and institutions. Our concert hall is the host for many YSU events, including performances by the Dana School of Music, the Skeggs Lecture Series, and Greek Sing. Opera Western Reserve, the only locally produced professional opera in the Mahoning Valley, calls Stamp Auditorium home. Their annual performance each November creates an atmosphere reminiscent of early days. It is truly an event, the opportunity to experience all Stambaugh has to offer, starting with dinner in the Grand Ballroom and the opera in the concert hall. Looking forward to the next 100 years, we will strive to continually respect and carry out the wishes of Henry Stambaugh. It was his vision to continue the outstanding reputation of arts and culture in Youngstown for future generations. On behalf of the directors and the staff of Stambaugh Auditorium, we would like to thank the Regional Chamber for the opportunity to sponsor this event. Uh, we hope to see you all next year. And on the way out, you'll notice there are chocolate stamp auditoriums. Those are yours to take. Please take two or three, because if not, I have to load them back into my car and drive them back to Stamba. Thanks. We'll see you next year. Thank you again, Ben, and the Stamp Auditorium for your support of this program, the City of Youngstown, and the Regional Chamber. And Ben, uh, regarding that whole speaking thing, I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, without further ado, to kick off the update portion of our program, I'd like to call in our first speaker of the morning, Mayor of the City of Youngstown, John McNally. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, from uh, the Chambers presenting me to come back this year and speak again. Uh, certainly, it is a daunting task to come up after the uh, uh, students from the Youngstown Connection uh, do a wonderful job and the, and the news that they've gotten the invitation to perform in front of the uh, Pope in 2016 is, is fantastic news. I want to thank Stambaugh Auditorium for their uh, sponsorship of today's event. Uh, got, got, uh, had my wedding reception there 17 years ago, if I remember correctly now. Uh, wonderful, wonderful facility back then. And with the uh, modernization and the improvements to the building, it's a, a wonderful place to have an event. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out today. Uh, I want to talk for a little bit about some of the great things that are happening in the city of Youngstown. And when I talk about these things, I, I really do get into some of the nuts and bolts of what we're doing in the city, especially in our different city departments. Uh, and I think that's, you know, the city government is there to do certain things. We are doing them well. We're doing them better than we have ever in the past. So I am going to get into some nuts and bolts today. Some of you may start to zone off after a little bit hearing about road improvements and perhaps a little bit about potholes. Uh, but it is important for all of you to know uh, what, for many of you, your income tax dollars are being used to pay for here in the city of Youngstown. As I did last year, I first want to thank our city street department uh, for the work that they've done over the wintertime. The primary focus of a Youngstown Street Department is to keep our streets safe and secure. In the winter months, our 33 employees uh, man 15 trucks. They're responsible for over 1,100 lane miles of street and expressway maintenance, which includes salting, snow removal, the inevitable pothole patching, and guardrail repair. And right now, our Street Department is busy working 12-hour shifts, 24 hours a day, and patching potholes on those 1,100 lane miles. Obviously, it's going to take a while to catch up with Mother Nature this year, uh, but we will catch up with her. In the 214 fall election, our city voters approved a charter amendment to combine our community development agency and the city's economic development office into what we now call the Department of Planning and, and Economic Development. The Department of Planning and, and Economic Development is housed in 20 federal place and is led by Department Director T. Sharon Woodbury. Our community planning and economic development department can now more efficiently work with our city council, with our business interests, and with our neighborhood groups to support community economic development. I believe that community development equals economic development for the city of Youngstown. Our economic development staff continues to be an excellent partner for local business development. Many of our partners are here today, local banks, VAM, 
Valorec, uh, Stambaugh Auditorium, uh, folks from MS I see, and, and many other folks that are out here in today's audience. You're all partners with us in economic development efforts. Other partners include the Regional Chamber, the Western Reserve Port Authority, the Mahoning Valley Economic Development Corporation, the City Administration and our City Council members who are here today are committed to creating the right environment for business development in our city's main corridors, in our city business parks, in our city downtown to bring income revenue to the city coffers and income to the pockets of city and valley residents. Uh, I've got some city council members that are here today, Councilwoman Annie Gillum from the 1st Ward, Councilman John Swires from the 7th Ward, I think I see Councilman Nate Pinkard from the 3rd Ward sitting there behind the pillar back there. Good morning, Nate. I want to thank them for their continued presence. Uh, these three council people in particular are always out in the community, especially at events like this. They're at events when we're swearing in new police officers and fire, firefighters, so I appreciate their commitment to, on a daily basis as councilmen. As we announced several weeks ago, the city will not be selling the 20 Federal Place building. This is something that I talked about at our State of the City address last year. The City Building and Grounds Department has invested back into that building over $3 million improvements. $1.2 million for new elevators, $1.3 million for a new AC and chiller system, and over $275,000 in new windows. All of these improvements have helped with the growth and retention of companies located within the 20 Federal Place building, which really is sort of the heart of downtown Youngstown. This includes VXI and its 1,100 employees. We have over 300 additional employees that call, that call 20 Federal Place their workplace home on a daily basis. Uh, this includes our Department of Community Planning and Economic Development. It will include Green Youngstown, which is our recycling uh, division. And hopefully by the end of the year, we'll also include the Mahoning Columbiana Training Association and its employees, which are currently located in the City Hall Annex building on, uh, on Front Street. Interest in downtown Youngstown remains very strong, as all of you know. The Wien United building has been de demolished, and the city now controls that site. And we're looking to find ways to green that site as the part of a development of a, a larger amphitheater project located between the South Avenue Bridge and the western edge of the Wien property. We're also looking for the addition of a, and creation of a park-like setting to be used by the community and downtown residents on a daily basis. The WIC building, owned by the NYO Property Group, ex expects to be completed by June 2015. The Wells building, under the renovation of, uh, in the hard work of Greg Strollo and his team at Strollo Architects, is under construction and renovation. The Gallagher building, owned by Dominic Gatta, is soon to begin its renovation. All of these projects bring in a combined in excess of $20 million in investment, utilizing city commitments, various bank financings, and state and federal historic tax credits. In July 2015, after the completion of the WIC building, we expect to see construction commence on the Doubletree Hotel in the Stambaugh building, which is a, pro a project by the NYO Property Group. We expect to see at least two new projects in our city business parks that hopefully will be announced within the next 90 days, bringing additional jobs and revenue to the city. And we expect an announcement of a new light manufacturing presence in the city by the end of 2015. Additionally, to help spur development in downtown Youngstown, the city has partnered with Studio Graphique, a Shaker Heights design company, to develop a wayfinding signage improvement plan in order, in order to bolster the attractiveness of our central business district. This is for the increasing number of new faces and visitors to the city of Youngstown, who when they come off of Route 680 or off the expressway or off one of our main corridors often say, Okay, where do I go now? And, and Mike McGiffin, our new downtown events director, uh, has already asked me how much I was going to speak about that subject. I don't want to steal any of his thunder, so I'm going to leave some more of that explanation to him in a few minutes. For the third year in a row, Youngstown has seen a marked decrease in eight major criminal categories compared to the same time periods in 2012 and 2013. Homicides down 5%. Robberies down 28%, burglary down 12%, theft down 9%, auto theft down 20%, aggravated assaults down 9%, arsons down 15%. I want to congratulate the entire Youngstown Police Department, including my chief Robin Lees, 
for their proactive, intelligence-led approach to, to crime prevention and crime solving. I think it's very important as I look out into the crowd today, to city residents and to folks who drive into the city of Youngstown every day, who are committed to the city of Youngstown, to know that our police department is not reactive, they are proactive in our community in trying to solve all of these criminal problems. In the past, seven mo in the past month, the city has hired seven new officers and we expect to hire an additional three by the end of, the end of May. These hirings will enable the city to staff our community policing unit, which will be tasked to work in a much, much more direct fashion with council people and the neighborhood groups in each ward, especially handling quality of life issues. These seven veteran officers, which will be picked by the police chief in, in coordination with our council people, will provide needed resources and the people skills, people skills to deal with quality of life concerns in our neighborhoods. And now if we move into a little bit of the nuts and bolts of some things in city government. And our Department of Public Works, once again, has a busy year in store for major infrastructure projects in the city. Obviously, at this time of the year, although I don't think we're finished with winter completely, completely roadway resurfacing projects will take precedence. As part of our fiscal year 2014 infrastructure improvement projects, Major resurfacing work will be done on Martin Luther King Boulevard uh, from Rayon to Belmont, that little connection down near uh, Bruce Zolden's uh, location down there, which is a sort of a bumpy, crater-filled uh, piece of land at the moment. Kirk Road from Meridian to Bears Den. Uh, for the U.S. siders or folks coming over from Canfield and Austintown, you know that needs a, some serious work. Gypsy Lane from Logan to Fifth and North Hazelwood from Mahoning, Mahoning Avenue to Donald Avenue. Our fiscal year 2015 infrastructure improvement projects, which will be bid in late 2015, will include traffic signal upgrades on Martin Luther King Boulevard, major resurfacing of Poland Avenue from Gibson to Jones, McGuffey Avenue, Gypsy Lane from Belmont to Fifth, and, and pretty much the complete rebuild of Wellington uh, off the 680 ramp near Bella Vista which again, if you've been over there before, uh, needs some serious, serious work. Additionally, Belmont Avenue between Francisca and West Federal Street will be resurfaced this year. Many folks from the hospital system and the university frequently talk about that stretch of roadway as well. Finally, resurfacing of approximately 100 to 120 blocks of residential streets in the city limits will also occur in later, late summer. Our friends at the Iowa Department of Transportation are gonna coordinate resurfacing projects on U.S. Route 422 from the Trumbull County line to Wirt Street and on Wilson Avenue from Hinrod, from Hinrod to the city of Camel. Uh, if you drive in that way from work, whether from Camel or Lowellville or Struthers, uh, again, the surface of the moon is a good comparison. <laughs> the Department of Public Works also oversees our wastewater treatment system. In 2014, the city and the U.S. EPA settled 15 years of litigation concerning proposed improvements to the wastewater plant and our collection systems. We reach agreement with the EPA on a 20-year long-term control plan with the, with the city committing approximately $145 million in improvements to our wastewater treatment plant, to the construction of a wet weather facility, and to improving overflow areas in Mill Creek Park and along the Mahoning River. Engineering and design work on those improvements to our system will begin this year. Our Green Youngstown program, led by Jennifer Jones and her recycling team, has become a, a, a force in recycling and green cleanup efforts here in our city and in Mahoning County. Their year, yearly appliance drives, tire drives, electronic drives are all utilized annually by city and county residents at, at no cost. In 2014, Green Youngstown was a committed partner with the United Way in its day of caring and with many of you in the audience who helped out this year in helping to coordinate cleanup of work done over 1,700 hours by 288 volunteers on 21 houses on 125 acres of blighted abandoned land on the north side. 2015 brings hope for a larger United Way day of caring within the city limits, downtown greening projects, and further collaboration with YNDC and the 422 corridor improvement project that's championed by the regional chamber. In 2014, we were able also to create a more cohesive and streamlined code enforcement and demolition process. The result of the city's collaboration with downtown software developer Empira and the receipt of a local government, local government innovation fund 
grant is the development of a mobile application for city inspection for our city inspectors, which we rolled out last summer. Now city residents, our employees, our council people, and concerned citizens can track daily code enforcement and the demolition processes from their computers. Additionally, we've moved our code enforcement staff back into City Hall to increase our internal communications and operations. In 2014, the city spent approximately 700,000 on demolition issues. 2015's budget calls for approximately $1.2 million in demolition spending through private contract work and city demolition crews. Many of you know the success of the Cavelli Center. In 2014, we enjoyed a banner year at the Cavelli Center. Under the direction of Eric Ryan and JAC management, we enjoyed our most profitable year with an operating surplus of over $700,000. The center hosted over 190,000 patrons for 80 events, which included 17 family performances, 36 sporting events, nine concerts, and nine spectacle shows. In addition to sold out concerts, the center is home to many community events, meetings, corporate gatherings, and private parties, as witnessed by the over 80 times that the Youngstown State University Community Room was utilized in 2014. And this was an important goal of City Council back in 2001 and 2002 and 2003 when the center was coming into fruition. City Council wanted to make sure there was a place that the community could use, and that is truly the case as we stand here today. I want to congratulate Everyone who's associated with Cavelli Center, I want to congratulate City Council and most importantly, the many businesses uh, and institutions that are sponsors of the facility, those who own loges or lease the loges, uh, signage sponsors, all of that pays way to success for that facility. I want to talk about one issue that you would think maybe doesn't come under the state of the city, uh, state of the city speech. But it's something that Governor Kasich also talked about in his State of the State address a couple weeks ago. And that's the issue of infant mortality. The United States has, ha has a higher infant mortality rate than, 20, than any other 27 wealthy countries, according to a new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. A baby born in the United States is nearly three times as likely to die during his or her first year of life as one born in countries like Finland or Japan. Ohio's infant mortality rate was the fifth worst in the country in 2011 and the worst state for African-American infant deaths. The report shows that over 1,000 Ohio infants died in 2011, approximately eight children per every 1,000 live births. For the period of 2008 to 2010, Mahoning County had the highest overall infant mortality rate in Ohio at 10 deaths for every 1,000 births. The city of Youngstown had the second highest infant mortality rate among major cities in, in Ohio at 12.1, which means 12.1 deaths for every 1,000 live births. Youngstown had a white infant mortality rate of 11.2, the highest among all major cities in Ohio. And the city of Youngstown had a black infant mortality rate of 14.4, the second highest among all major cities in Ohio. An African-American baby born in the state of Ohio has the least chance of surviving to his or her first birthday than any other state in the country. So what is being done to ensure that babies in the city of Youngstown and in Mahoning County reach their first birthday? Since August of 2013, the health commissioners of the city health district and the Mahoning County District Board of Health have been co-leads on the Young Mahoning Youngstown Birth Outcome Equity Team. This birth equity team is part of a statewide equity institute to address birth outcome disparities. The Equity Institute is a collaboration of the Ohio Department of Health and CityMatch, a national organization of urban maternal child health care leaders. This Mahoning Youngstown team is made up of 34 representatives from our local hospitals, obstetric practices, NICU specialists, the March of Dimes, Planned Parenthood, the Ohio Infant Mortality Reduction Initiative, Mercy Health, and local and state public health officials and local foundation funders. This team is charged with analyzing local data and developing a collective community action plan to address infant mortality and birth outcome disparities across Mahoning County. Their data ana analysis was completed in April of 2014. 
And they've determined through a through review of parent and some scientific terms here, through a review of perinatal periods of risk analysis, that infant, infant deaths occurred most often where maternal health and prematurity, through maternal health and prematurity, meaning babies were born too little and too early. The high rates within both the white race and, and African-American races within the city of Youngstown has led our birth equity team to choose poverty and low education as target groups for chosen interventions. The highest prevalence of low birth weight premature babies in the city of Youngstown was identified in women having a baby less than 18 months apart and being unmarried, which leads to poor support systems. The women with these risk factor factors were more likely to have preterm low birth weight babies than a woman without them. So to attempt to rectify these issues, the following priorities have been established. Increasing social, social support for mothers-to-be and new mothers, increasing interconception spacing, and increasing opportunities for improved economic stability and financial management skills. The birth equity team has established a provider and patient education program on long-acting reversible contraceptives and birth spacing. The birth equity team is establishing the first ever centering pregnancy center at Mercy Health with a goal of, re of doing away with short and frequently impersonal prenatal visits and replacing them with more longer and meaningful productive sessions lasting up to three hours in length with a group of other pregnant women and their medical providers. We've also established a fetal infant mortality review board in Mahoning County, which will bring together key members of the community to review information from individual cases of fetal death in order to identify factors associated with those deaths. Additionally, they're working with Akron Children's Hospital to establish a prematurity prevention program, which will focusing on, focus on administering drugs to expect to expectant mothers to help solve the problem of preterm births. Progesterone is one of those drugs. It's a hormone that's been clinically shown to reduce the risk of preterm birth by as much as 35 to 45 percent for mothers who are at risk. Additionally, they're working on the development of a best practices team which will build on economic stability and creating a new support group to help younger mothers address their financial and economic concerns. This is an important issue economically for this entire region and for the state of Ohio. And so the city of Youngstown is happy to support their work. Uh, city council has been asked to fund it and agreed to fund additional work on this subject in the amount of $20,000. Uh, Mahoney County is helping fund it and more importantly, the state of Ohio is involved as well. Um, this is not, you know, it's not a uh, issue we want to talk about, but it is an issue for an economic uh, development program here in, in Mahoning County and in the city of Youngstown, and it's something that we do have to pay attention to in the future. Two last points I'd like to discuss. In the fall of 2014, the city hired Michael McGiffin as our downtown events and special events coordinator. Michael's done a great job so far. Uh, you're going to hear from him in a, hear from him in a few minutes about his plans for an increased calendar of events here in the downtown and the city of Youngstown for this summer and the fall. Additionally, I want to congratulate uh, my good friend Monica Jones, who will be speaking as well about the successes at uh, Youngstown Early College and the city school board. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, thank you for indulging, once again, my review of city operations. But I do want to make sure that everyone recognizes and appreciates the work that our city employees do on a daily basis not for themselves, but for the residents and customers of the city of Youngstown. For many of you, your income tax dollars uh, thankfully help pay for a lot of these services. And we must be able to continually explain to you the work that's being done with those dollars. And finally, for those of you who will be out on uh, St. Patrick's Day celebrating here on March 17th, um, that is the third Tuesday of the month, which is the day that I hold my uh, monthly five minutes with the mayor. and. Uh, I've been told that I have to behave myself now at the St. Patrick's Day luncheon at St. Pat's Church at noon on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I had suggested to my staff that we could call this month's program Shots and Shamrocks with the Mayor, but they, um, they wisely said, Mayor, that's not a good idea at all. But if you are downtown, 
on St. Patrick's Day and you want to stop by the mayor's office to say hello, uh, especially after 5 o'clock, feel free to do so. We'd love to have you stop in uh, before and after you're out having fun in downtown Youngstown. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Dodge the potholes some more. Uh, help, help is on the way on the potholes. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mayor. That was a great wealth of information on the developments in the city and more awareness, of course, to the infant mortality issue. And uh, we appreciate your being here this morning and all of your time. And of course, he mentioned uh, Michael McGiffin, and we were, we were glad to have him here with us this morning as well. We were joking before that I knew there were a lot of upcoming events, and we talked about the Italian Fest and the fact that people downtown are happy because they can go out at lunch, to which I joked, well, it's not a joke, but uh, a lot of our staff just don't go out at lunch. We go out several times over the course of two days, so we're always glad that, that, that that's taking place downtown. But here to tell us more, please welcome the Director of Downtown Events and Citywide Special Projects, Mr. Michael McGiffin. Thanks, Kim. Um, thank you, my sort of counterparts over at Stamba for sponsoring this breakfast. Uh, thank you to all of you for, in advance for putting up with me for the next five or so minutes. And uh, thank you, Mayor, and, and the rest of City Council for all the, our City Council and City Hall for all the hard work that you do on a daily basis. Um, I want to start by saying that um, that video sort of felt as though the regional chamber is a group of superheroes. And it was a, a movie promotion for all of the, the saving that they do in this city. And they really do uh, an incredible job um, with the challenges that they've been tasked with, tasked with. And I think that video was, was very fitting. And I'd actually like to see if I can possibly get my hands on a copy to circulate it. Um, so when April first asked me to speak here today, she said, we're going to introduce you as the new guy. And as I've been meeting people throughout the city of Youngstown, that's pretty much what I've been, been being called. You're, oh, you're the new Lindsay, or you're the new guy. And, and I say, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. So I'm going to function, and I think we should function at this point on the basis that we don't know each other. So I'll start by telling you a little bit about me. I've been here my whole life, uh, a Youngstown resident, probably like most of you in this room. Graduated from Poland High School and uh, did what a lot of kids do when they graduate high school. I applied for college. Uh, I applied and was accepted and enrolled really in three different schools, three different universities, and went to see these schools and decided I want to stay at YSU. I don't know if it was because I didn't want to leave mom or the luxuries that she provided or didn't want to have to go to a new city. I'm not sure exactly why, why I stayed, but I did. So I graduated from YSU and uh, did what a lot of people do when they graduate from college these days and said, now what? I decided that I was going to apply for grad schools. Same story, three different schools, decided I'm gonna stick around for another couple years and go to YSU again. Again, mom made a convincing argument with the services that she provides and the love that she provides, but also I wasn't sure if I wanted to move to a new city, build a new network, set new goals, things like that. After grad school, a very similar story, I decided that I'm going to do what most people do when they graduate grad school, and I'm going to apply for jobs. I started applying for jobs. For the sake of the, the speech today, we'll assume that I got three different jobs on the table. <laughs> Not the case. Everybody knows that. But I started working at YSU. I was very fortunate for that opportunity because I was serving the institution that served me, serving the city that has been my home for my entire life, and, and passing down uh, the care, the empathy, and the knowledge that was taught to me through that institution to new students. I was happy to return the favor of mentorship. So a friend of mine sends an email to the mayor about four or five months ago, maybe even a little longer at this point, and says, Mayor, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the conversation we've had. And I'd like to recommend Mike McGiffin to help you out in this endeavor. 
He works at the university. This is his role. He's a Youngstown resident. He's a cheerleader for all things Youngstown. I think he'd be great to be on the search committee to find the new director of downtown events. So I call my friend and say, what the heck is this? What are you doing? What, you know, what, what's going on here? And he says, I think that you should be on the search committee. You should represent YSU. I said, I think that's a great idea. I know the, the past two people who've served in this position very well. I work with them on a regular basis. I, I can bring a lot to that team. So I emailed the mayor and said, Mayor, I'd like to, I'd like to help you out in finding the new director. He's a great man. He's a great boss, communicator, leader. All things are wonderful about this man. He does a really good job. But would you not believe that man did not email me back? <laughs> not one word. So I said, OK, I guess he doesn't want me to, to help him out. So I watched the job get posted, and I started thinking about it. And I said, this, this job has a really tremendous responsibility associated with it. The duties and responsibilities that come with this position could, could be something that can really affect the outcome of Youngstown. And quite frankly, if I can't help pick this person, I'm going to go be this person. So I applied. Three interviews, a presentation, and, a, and a, quite a few orientations later, here I am. And I'm very happy to be here. And I appreciate everybody for the support that they've given so far. So that's me. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> um, does everybody know Phil Kidd? Give me a, OK. Uh, the, all right. well, so we all know Phil. He's pretty much a, a celebrity at this point. Phil had my job quite a few years ago. He succeeded Claire Meluso, and then Lindsay Hughes succeeded him. Phil is most famous for creating two initiatives within the city of Youngstown. Defend Youngstown is one of them, and Youngstown Nation is the other. Youngstown Nation acts sort of as our souvenir shop and, and, and pro-Youngstown store, and it's over on North Phelps Street in downtown. Defend Youngstown was an initiative created to do exactly what the title says, Defend Youngstown. It was during a time where, where people looked at Youngstown with, with glazed eyes and sort of felt that it was a place that even our, our residents, our suburban residents, didn't necessarily want to be at certain times. So Phil stood up for us. Well, the reason why I bring him up is because everybody in this room is probably very aware that we're not defending anymore. There are people knocking on our door. We have a room full of people who are working on the betterment and the, the well-being of Youngstown. and we're sort of turning that corner, we're rounding that edge, we're, we're, we're cusping the hail, if you will. And that's true with events in Youngstown. So whereas 10 years ago, you would walk downtown on a Saturday night and you'd probably be able to throw a Frisbee with your buddy in the middle of the street at 11 o'clock, that's absolutely not the case anymore. You have trouble crossing the street. Uh, as the video actually said, you, you have to go in reverse to find a parking space. So with the influx of event promoters knocking on the door of the city of Youngstown to host their events here, what I can assure you is that this summer, you're going to see a lot out of us. And if you'll bear with us, you're going to probably see some growing pains, but you're going to see some experimental events. I would expect to see the same festivals that you see on a yearly basis, those heritage festivals. Expect them to be a little bit bigger. Expect them to be a little bit more advertised. And expect them to, to really shine this summer, because everybody's putting an interested effort into what we're doing for the event purposes. But as far as experiments go, one, maybe two examples, if I can give you a little bit of a briefing on them, is we're going to rappel off of the 15th floor of the First National Bank building in honor and in a fundraiser purpose for the Beatitude House. Um, that's a joint initiative between NYO and the Beatitude. Uh, we're entertaining the opportunity of having a 1,000 foot giant slip and slide down the Market Street Bridge. Sorry for throwing that on you guys right now. <laughs> That'll benefit the Rich Center for Autism. And um, we're looking at 
three to five new music and arts festivals within the downtown area, all with nonprofit benefits or beneficiaries, if you will. So we're looking at an exciting calendar. We're looking at some growing pains throughout that process, but the good thing is they're coming to us. So when we consider all these promoters and all these committees and all these nonprofit agencies that want to host events in Youngstown, we look at the city and how its infrastructure, how its look, how it's branded, and how its uh, uh, navigation and wayfinding is. And we say to ourselves, we need to make this a little bit easier for everybody involved. So from a, an internal standpoint, we're working on a few different things. First and foremost, we're, we're figuring out our look. We're figuring out our appearance. And with that, one of the initiatives that we're doing is we're going to rebrand the city. When you look at us now, we look like a, a, a seal. We look like a word mark. We look like a website that was created probably in the early 2000s. And we look like a lot of paper. What we're trying to look like within the next few years is a very progressive and welcoming place for anybody and everybody. And in doing that, we're working with Youngstown Design Works, uh, a grant-funded initiative by YSU to redo our entire city's website, rebrand the city of Youngstown, create an entire image overhaul, and further create a subsite for all things events, culture, arts, music, cuisine, and establishments. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us the opportunity to uh, showcase where we are, showcase where we're going, and, and help spread the word of all the good things happening within Youngstown. Another initiative is the reinvention of space, something that everybody is working on within the city of Youngstown. We have all these beautiful old buildings, all these beautiful grounds. Let's repurpose them. Let's reinvent them. Mayor touched briefly on the RFQ that went out for the new amphitheater and green space. What we're hoping for that is basically my playground and everybody else's playground because of the events that we put on. We're hoping to host anything from a family picnic to a three-day music and arts festival with three-phase electricity, toilet sheds, basically a turnkey space for everybody and anybody to have their event. Beyond that, something that uh, I think might be news at this point is late this summer, we're going to be closing Phelps Street for utility upgrades and infrastructure improvements. It's a, it's a needed project. It's out to bid at this point. And we're pretty positive that we need to move forward with this. That closure is a necessary thing. When we reopen Phelps Street about a year and a half from now, we're hoping to reopen it not to vehicular traffic, basically creating a giant patio for the restaurants and establishments that are already on that street and attracting new restaurants and establishments to that area. What that'll do is it'll, it'll create a nice, welcoming atmosphere. Think. East 4th in Cleveland, if you will. Um, a great place to host events. As in the past year, actually, we've had somewhere between six and seven, six and eight events on Phelps Street already. Beyond that, if we have a new look and we have your attention by way of new websites and branding and we have new spaces and facilities to host these events, we're going to need new ways to help you navigate and find your way. So the wayfinding project that the mayor also touched on, that initiative had, was, was put out to bid and uh, accomplished as of this far. Mid-April, we're going to have our finalized plan of where our new aesthetic and congruent signage is going. If you travel to downtown, as mayor's touched on, you get off on the highway, you turn right, you turn left, you hit one of the major roads that bring you into, into downtown, whether it's South, whether it's Wick, Market, what have you. And once you get into downtown, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know where you're going. So if you consider that these signs might not necessarily be for us, but our visitors and our folks that travel in, think of a directional sign when you get off the highway an informational sign once you reach the cusp of the downtown area, and a celebratory sign once you've reached your destination. 
all aesthetically pleasing, all congruent, all Youngstown. A way to, to get where you're going without having to utilize your telephone and a way to, to see exactly what, what you are looking to see um, by way of, of curb appeal, branding, and everything working together, really. So we're going to have a fun summer. We're going to have a fun weekend this weekend. And we're going to have a pretty much a fun weekend every weekend for as long as we're in Youngstown, because that's really what we should be doing, is enjoying our time. When I, um, what I want to say next is that I'm really proud of Youngstown. I'm really proud to be in this position. I'm really proud to be here talking to you guys. And I'm really proud of, of all the work that you guys are doing. And what I hope is that you take a break from everything that you've been working on thus far. And you come and you have a little fun with us this summer. Whether you come to a party on the plaza, whether you come to the Italian festival, whether you come to Simply Slavic or one of the music festivals that you're planned or that we're planning, stop in, have a drink with us, have some food, enjoy some music, and hang out. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Michael. I know you and the mayor both referenced, um, I think if you've worked or been around downtown for a long time, you'll agree that the face of the area looks dramatically different than it did even 10 or 15 years ago. So we thank you for all your efforts and we're looking forward to a fun summer. Well, we're always proud to tout the numerous positive rankings that the Youngstown Warren area has received over the past five years. And last fall, a unique one in particular caught our eye. Newsweek, Newsweek named the Youngstown Early College one of America's top high schools for 2014 ranking it 251 out of 500 schools. The list ranks schools that focus on helping students achieve despite the economic setbacks they may face. So please welcome to give us more details the Dean of the Youngstown Early College, Monica Jones. Good morning. Good morning. I am Monica Jones. I am the Dean of Youngstown Early College. It is a pleasure to be here this morning um, before you. Uh, I have to tell a short story. I live on Academy Drive, so that's about maybe one to two minutes away from here. I, when I saw Country Club in the email I received from April, I just assumed it was the Mahoney County Country Club. So I'm sitting in the parking lot. It's 7.30. I'm like, where is everyone? <laughs> maybe it's the wrong day. Um, and, and eventually I figured out I'm in the wrong place. So I was able to reroute. And when I found out how close the Youngstown Country Club was to me, I said, wow, this is something else. So I'm glad I had my cell phone and MapQuest to get me quickly here so that I could be on time. I want to quickly tell you some great things about Youngstown Early College and the early college movement. I would like to introduce you to Taylor, and Antonio, and Tyree. These young individuals attend Youngstown Early College. Currently, of the three, one of them will graduate with their high school diploma and their associate degree upon high school graduation. Two of the three will receive their high school diploma and at least accrue 45 college semester hours by the time they graduate from high school. And the reason they're able to accomplish that great feat is because of, because of schools like Youngstown Early College. So I submit to you that Youngstown Early College is one of 18 early colleges in the state of Ohio. I believe that this is just not a moment in public education, but I believe this is a movement. Uh, when you think about the word reformation, in the Greek, it comes from a word called diaorthesis, which means to restore back to natural order or restore back to its natural condition. Um, because there's something that's protruding out. And when you look at American public education, let me go back to this slide. We have a curvage, there's a curve in the American public education. And according to the original ideals of public education, education is for all students. And some way along the way over the years, 
um, we've kind of tolerated inequality across public schools. And so early college, Youngstown Early College, is one of those schools that gives access to college, to families, for free. The ability to get a degree, not only a high school degree, but a college degree before they're 19 years old. I think that's phenomenal. And not only are they able to have this opportunity, they are high achieving young people. Um, we always get, because we serve a population of students who are considered at risk, they're considered traditionally underrepresented, that the mindset is that they cannot achieve. That is not the case for the students who attend Youngstown Early College or schools like Early College. In the state of Ohio, we serve 4,000 students. Um, and again, attending a school like Early College breaks the vicious cycle of poverty for these underrepresented students. Of course, we have to provide strong supports for these young people so that they can be successful. Our school in particular started in 2004, and we had help from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Jobs for the Future. Um, we are currently in partnership with Youngstown State University, Youngstown City School District, and Eastern Gateway Community College. And basically, at YEC, there is a unified restructuring of the academic work that we expect our students to do from grades nine through the second year of college in a very personalized learning environment. That's the reason why Youngstown Early College works. We are a small school, and we can attend to our students intensely. The expectation is to graduate in four years with a minimum of 30 semester credit hours. When students enter Youngstown Early College in the ninth grade, it is the expectation that you will graduate not only from high school, but that you will also have an inroad into getting a college degree. That is the message across the border. And we currently serve 217 outstanding, bold, courageous, innovative, and at times rambunctious students um, on, a, on our um, campus. This is De Dion. Dion represents the great students at Youngstown Early College. There are four main things that we focus on. We empower, develop, sustain, and prepare. That is very important for us here at Youngstown Early College. And the most important thing is that we're preparing our students to be college and career ready without needing remedial coursework. Again, earlier I've explained that we don't exist without our partners. We don't exist without Youngstown State University, the city, the school system, and Eastern Gateway. When students attend our school, by the time they get to their junior year, if they take advantage of every opportunity that we have for them, they can earn 33 college semesters by the time they get to their junior year in high school. Not college, high school. And so our students are working very hard to get there. And again, you don't set such a lofty goal without putting the appropriate supports in place for them to get there. And this is our framework, and this is what we use in order to make sure that we are ensuring success for our students. There are 12 components that we follow. For example, Summer Bridge, Advisor Advisee, Academic Reviews is a very critical piece. We sit down and we talk about every student in the school. We talk about their behavior, their grades, all the key stakeholders sit down and we review everything so that we can make the best decision possible. PAC is our values, preparation, accountability, achievement, College completion, those are our values at Youngstown Early College. Here are our stats. This is a three-year trend. According to the Ohio State report card, we have been in the high 90s to 100% passage on that state test. Um, just last year, we were 100% passage in reading, math, and writing and we just received a 100% graduation rate this past year. A 100% graduation rate at Youngstown Early College. That is phenomenal. And that is able to happen because of a great staff, great students, great parents, and a great community. Uh, this is our results 
compared to the other area high schools. Uh, yes, we serve students who come from poverty-stricken areas. Yes, we do serve students who are considered at risk, but those are labels. These kids are able to achieve, and as you can tell according to the data, we are high-performing just like the area suburban schools um, of Poland, Canfield, Liberty, we are performing just as high as they are. Here are some of our accomplishments. According to the US News report, we have received the Bronze Award three consecutive years in a row of being the best high school in the USA. Also, as you heard earlier by Newsweek, we were identified as the best high school according to the Beat the Odds um, list. Also, we were awarded $101,000 by the Ohio Board of Regents for the College Access Grant Award. And we were one of 48 schools in the state of Ohio recognized as a high-performing school of honor. Here are our college performance highlights. Starting in 2008 to 2014, in the 18 Ohio early colleges, we're one of about three who are actually located on a four-year university. And so our students actually have to go through the rigorous curriculum and content at the university, as opposed to being connected to a two-year um, college, which you can relatively get to an associate degree a little bit faster. So that's what, how you can tell that in the data. So we started off with four students um, receiving an associate degree till now, um, we vary between 16 and 13. So a total of seven years, we've had 63 students get their high school diploma and their associate degree at the same time. And because we're now able to track our students once they graduate from college, because of the National Student Clearinghouse, we now have found that there are 19 of our students who have literally got a four-year degree, bachelor's degree, and or um, doctoral degree. And so we are working more feverishly to make sure that we get that data. It's very important for the state of Ohio that we reduce the amount of remedial work that students take as they enter into YSU. We've been able to decrease our numbers from 22% in the fall of 2010 to now we're at 3%. So what this means is that our graduating class, if there's a class of 56, that means 3% of those students in that graduating class need remedial work. We want to get that to 0%. According to the National Student Clearinghouse, 89% of our graduates, when they graduate from YSU, enroll in college. 80% of our students persist into their second year. And 56.9% graduate from college with a two or four year degree. That is an area that we consistently are gonna work on to increase that percentage. Lastly, the reason why Youngstown Early College is a great school and the movement of the early college movement is great for three things. It decreases the need of remedial coursework. It increases high school graduation, college matriculation, college persistence, and college completion especially for those students who are underrepresented. It creates a more stronger, more effective path forward toward the creation of a more developed, more skilled workforce. Um, that's important. We want our people to stay here in Youngstown and be a part of the economy as it is booming and as it is growing. And we want to increase the number of college and career ready students, which will foster workforce and economic development. Here is one of my favorite quotes from Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. The ideals of education where the men are taught to teach or plow, to write or to weave, must not be allowed to sink into sordid utilitarianism. Education must keep broad ideals before it and never forget that it is clearly with souls and not dollars. And what that means is this whole reformation thing uh, is about the students and not about the money. We have to make sure that we have a bold way of making sure that we get kids access to college and equality education for everyone. So I wanna say thank you for this opportunity to uh, give you a little snapshot of what Youngstown Early College is about. I welcome you to come to Youngstown State University, first floor of Feeder Hall, to 
I invite you to come in and see us. Um, the kids would love to see you. So if you have some time in your busy schedules, please stop by and visit us. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Monica, for a fantastic overview of the program. I, I know a lot of us were aware of the college, but wasn't quite sure how it functioned and certainly didn't know about all those great statistics. So congratulations and thank you. For the sake of time, we are going to forego our presentation this morning, but we did leave some information on the table about some of our economic development results, so please feel free to take that with you. Otherwise, we appreciate your time. City of Youngstown, Stamp Auditorium, thank you for everything, and we hope you have a great weekend.